Hi wonderfully created, welcome back to Created I Am. Today we're going to sew a simple ruffle skirt. Grab your material and cut out a strip. You want this strip to be the length of your waist plus four centimeters and you want it to be double the thickness you want your waistband to be plus two centimeters. My thickness was about eight centimeters. Measure the circumference of your hip. You want your strip going all the way around to be at least three times your hip measurement so you can get defined emphasized ruffles. You can go up to four times your hip depending on how much material you have. I achieved this by cutting out two strips. I then sewed them together right sides together so the right sides were touching. So the one centimeter seam allowance so that the whole length was around three times the circumference of my hip then you want your material to be the length of your waist to your knee or the desired length plus two centimeters there are different ways to ruffle the material there's even foot that you can buy that will do it for you the good basic way is by grabbing a humble needle and some thread so grab some thread that is matching pull it so that the thread is at least two times your waist plus about 10 centimeters you want it to be double your waist circumference so that when you fold it, it will wrap around your waist at least once. Tie a knot at the end. You might want to make this extra thick by tying a knot over it a couple of times so it doesn't pull through. When you first put your needle in, make sure you give yourself about an inch, which is about two centimeters room. That's so that when it comes to sewing the zip, you have a good enough room at the start and the end without ruffles getting in the way. Then you're going to take your needle in and out of your material about every two centimeters or you can do the technique I'm doing which is holding the needle and kind of gathering the material onto the needle as it will be once finished. If it's not exactly distributed as you want, we are going to go back and distribute it a bit more evenly later. Remember not to ruffle it all the way to the end, leave about an inch, about two centimeters allowance at the end to make attaching the zip easier. Once you've done that, tie a couple of knots right at the end of your thread. What you then want to do is ensure that the width of your new ruffled material matches the width, the circumference of your waist plus your seam allowance. So take your waist measurement and add four centimeters to that. That's the length your ruffled material needs to be. Once I'm sure my material is the length it needs to be, I'm going to re-knot the thread there. If you want to, you can cut the thread to be your waist plus a four centimeter straight away. So you don't have to do this step. I just like this room for error, just in case, but that's the second option for you to take. You don't want this to loosen later, so make sure you tie a couple of knots over it to secure it in place. Once it's secure, you can now take your ruffles and manipulate them and make sure they're evenly spread. Whilst you're doing this, hold the top and pull the ruffles down to make sure they're not weirdly angled on top of each other. After double checking that the measurements is okay, once again, if you so choose, you can actually secure these ruffles in place by taking your material to the sewing machine and sewing it down with a simple straight stitch at the top, giving yourself one centimeter seam allowance. As you know, I like things being as quick but efficient as possible. So for this one, I didn't do that, unlike my previous piece where there was a lot going on. With this piece, I thought it was fine enough to attach the waistband now before securing the ruffles in place. So to do this, you want the right side of your material, of your main material facing up, and then the right side of your waistband facing down. So the right sides of both materials are touching. I then connected the waistband to the main piece of material. As you can see, I started by clipping the two edges, then I clipped the middle, then I started clipping in between to make sure that my ruffles were evenly distributed. You can see that I'm taking my time to make sure the ruffles are aligned. The more pinning or clips you do, the better because you're holding the temporary ruffles in the area you want to sew it down. Once I was happy with the distribution, I took the bottom of the waistband and I pulled it up and clipped that in place so that the waistband will be completely attached. There's different ways you can finish the waistband. 
I'm just showing you another way. I would say this is probably one of the simplest ways, just sewing it down together all at once. But you do have to be a bit more patient when you take it to the sewing machine because you'll be working with a lot of material. So make sure that the clips are well secured. Add more if you need to. You don't want the ruffles to be moving because I didn't secure mine in place. If you secured yours in place before clipping on the waistband, it will make it easier. So that all of the ruffles are kept in place, when you're sewing it down, my advice is to have the ruffles up because it's easier to see them and make sure they're all included. I knew I'd be working with a lot of material, so I did a bit of a test. I sewed it down using the normal foot and then I also recently purchased at the time a walking foot and I compared the two. I would say a walking foot is actually quite nice to have and it does help you with thicker materials but if you have a normal foot you should still be able to do this kind of project. I use Ankara a lot when I am sewing and it's a bit of a stiffer material and the sewing machine handled it well. Once you reach the edge make sure to backstitch to hold it in place. Once you're done check what you've just sewn make sure there's no holes or gaps if there is it's okay just pop it back in and sew down that section securing it lining it up with the other stitch what you then want to do is take the right sides and pop them together this will mean you can see the wrong sides line up your waistband at the top grab your zip and pop it on because it's a ruffle skirt you probably will not need too long of a zip. Mark about one centimeter up from when your zip teeth ends. That will tell you where to backstitch. If you can, put your stitch length on the longest length. You're going to sew down from the top to that point, backstitch, then change it back to the normal length and sew it all the way down and backstitch. You do not backstitch it at the start. You can see me taking my piece to the sewing machine, putting my foot down, I do not backstitch, don't backstitch. The reason is because we're going to come back and seam rip this off later so that we can open the zip. Now, if like me, you cannot manipulate the length of your stitches, you can't increase or decrease the length of a classic stitch on your sewing machine, that is okay. All I do is sew down without any backstitches, backstitch at the point I marked, then sew down again and backstitch. I can still seam rip a normal length it's just that if you increase the stitch length, it's easier to seam rip. Now I'm making a mistake here, which is to use my walking foot when the material is not that thick to handle. The normal advice is just to use your walking foot when you have thicker piece of material that the walking foot can drag under. Before we start seam ripping it though, we need to attach the zip. So take your skirt and make sure you can see the wrong side. Open up that seam you just created. Take your zip and lay it right sides on the actual seam. So you should be able to see the wrong side of the zip whilst the right side of your zip is in between that seam you've just sewn. The puller of your zipper needs to match the top of your waistband. So you can see here on my skirt that the tape of the zip is hanging off. We're going to sort that out later. I like to unzip it at this point once I have my positioning. You could sew the zip to the skirt completely or you can just sew the zip to the flap of the seam you've just made. I'm just going to sew the zip to the flap. The benefit of sewing the zip to the flap is you can hide the zipper. So I'm going to take my pin and pin the zip. Remember. If you just want to sew it to the flap, just pin it to the flap. If you want to sew it to the flap and the main skirt, make sure you pin it carefully, removing any creases. My advice is to pin one side at a time so that the other side does not get in the way when you're sewing. I'm sewing from the bottom just so my excess material from the piece is on the left. I'm going to start as low down as possible, do a back stitch to secure that in place and then continue sewing down. Again, I know I have the walking foot on, I should have switched it. I think this was like the first time I'd ever used it. So I was trying to see if there was a difference on a 
normal thickness sewing run <laughs> if I use a walking foot. Now walking foot or no walking foot, if your zipper is in the way, make sure your needle is turned into the piece securing it, lift the foot up, zip the puller down, then you can continue nice and simple sewing along. For this piece you do not need to get particularly close to the teeth, just sew down the middle. Continue sewing all the way to the end, back stitching and of course you'll have that excess tape left over, just leave that. Now that that is attached we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Align it back and pin it in place, only pinning it to the flap if that's how you want to sew it. I did not pin, which will not be a surprise if you see my previous videos. I just back stitched at the top and then sewed it down. So this time I started at the top and again that's just because it makes it easier to put the material on the left whilst seeing the actual zip so I can sew it down. If you need the zipper teeth to be moved out of the way, put the needle in, lift up the foot and then manipulate the zipper, pull it back up so it's out of the way. Because you started closing off the zip it might be a bit harder but you should be able to do it. Sew it down to the end, back stitch. Before you can seam rip, you want to secure the excess tape of the zipper out of the way. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to fold it back and then sew it down. If you want to, you could just sew it down to the tape like you did that main part of the zip. What I've done is I've clipped it completely to the tape and to the waistband. And I'm going to sew on top of this waistband, but just that part for about two centimeters. So I just took it to the sewing machine, backstitch, sewed it about two centimeters, backstitch. I did this on both sides to secure the zipper tape out of the way. Depending on the material you choose, you may want to switch to a thread that will blend in and then we can seam rip. So grab your seam ripper and take your time seam ripping open that initial stitch. When you hit the back stitch you made just on top of the end of the zipper it will be very obvious because it's not as easy to seam rip and you want to stop at that point obviously to make it easier for yourself make sure that your zip is open not closed and voila la la, la <laughs> you've you've pretty much done all you need to do at this point is to hem the bottom of the skirt fold it up inside on the wrong side one centimeter fold it again if you want iron it down up to you then sew it in place Backstitch, sew all the way around to you go back to the start. Backstitch, and you're done. And there you go. You've made a cute ruffle skirt with a zip. If you want to see my other ruffle skirt that was the ASOS remake, check out the videos on the channel. If you'd like to see the matching blazer I made with this skirt, that's also going to be in the description. Thank you for all those who've given video suggestions and have asked questions or given tips and things like that. I will try and reply more frequently. I am trying to manage my social media use, but I know some of you do have specific sewing questions. So as much as I can, I'll give you detailed responses. I'm not an expert. I'm learning as I'm going as well, but I'll try and share what I know. But of course, most importantly, I'd love you to remember that you are wonderfully created.